Farmers are revolting. I, I mean, I don't mean they're nasty or smelly or anything like that. I, I mean they are demonstrating. They are demonstrating the fact that the governments have gone completely bonkers and are trying to get farmers to stop farming. I've been talking to uh, a couple of people recently and we've been seeing, of course, in uh, the Netherlands that the, that the farmers are very upset with the government's approach to try and basically get them off the land and build on their land and move people into these tri-cities and what have you. And over here, it's the same policy. Farmers are being given incentives to stop farming, to sell their land off so that they can be covered in things like solar panels or wind farms or grow trees or anything other than farm. No farming, we have no food. It might be advisable to stock up with some food in actual fact because it does seem as if the farmers are going to be making a big noise about all of this and good on them. I'm going to have um, more of a, a look on this in the show coming forward and talk to some farmers in due course. I would love to get out there and do some farming myself. If you were to ask me what I would do, I would love to keep pigs, I would love to grow my own vegetables and chickens and bees. And I think ultimately it's going to come down to us to do a lot of the farming ourselves. We need to get behind our farmers, of course, and we need to be able to support those and encourage them not to keep going for all the green deals and the net zero nonsense and all this sort of set aside and growing farms and, and putting all the nonsense of the CO2 into the, into the ground and all of that because CO2 is actually the food of plants and if you can grow more plants with CO2, we'll have more animals. We need to be eating uh, meat because there is so much uh, goodness in meat. Now, I know some people will disagree with that statement and you're quite welcome to disagree with it, but each to their own. A lot of people uh, enjoy a carnivore diet. If we turn away from farming, we will ultimately be pushed towards the nonsense of eating more insects or any insects. I don't want to eat any insects other than what I might accidentally swallow when I'm snoring in the middle of the night and a spider comes down into my mouth. That's about the limit of it, or perhaps the odd bug on a lettuce. I don't mind that, but I'm certainly not going to tuck into a bowl of mealworms uh, with a big, big load of milk for my breakfast. Mind you, you won't be able to get milk unless it's this oat milk or some other kind of milk. And I'm not interested in any of that synthetic rubbish from Bill Gates. He can keep that and eat it for himself. We've got to get back to a proper type of farming, mixed farming, on this land. That's my opinion. You may disagree. But the push for us, the ordinary everyday people, if you've got space in your garden, it may be well advised to start thinking about growing this year. Because as we are in December, it's cold and we're about to probably have frosts and things like that. But the growing season is about to come. There are plenty of YouTube channels with people with allotments. My friend Sean has one. And they'll tell you what to plant at what time and all of that. But we need to make space. Now, I had an email from a lovely lady called Elaine who was telling me about the stuff that she did. And I thought it would be worth just having a look at uh, her email and her photographs because it might incentivize other people who've been thinking about it to rip up their lawn. I mean, I'm serious, to rip up their lawn and start growing. If you've got one, it might be an idea. Let's have a look at her email. And it came in as thus. She says... Richard, I just wanted to share this picture, and we'll have a look at that in a moment, with you of my garden transformation I did a few years back. I was staring at a lawn for 17 years, and upon wakening to spirit, I felt the sudden urge to transform the garden to grow food. And, and here you can see what she has done in these pictures as I read the rest of the email. My darling husband did all the manual physical work, and I got going on the planting after he had done the most amazing job. I've had a lot of success in the beds with potatoes, onions, charlots, uh, shallots rather, kale, beetroot, red cabbage, lettuce, leeks, spinach, rocket sprouts and cauliflower. I grow tomatoes, red chilies in my greenhouse from seed. And last year I had 25 tomato plants just from the seeds of one tiny cherry tomato saved from the years before crops um, as they were so tasty. The yield on all 24 plants, 25 plants was incredible and that was 
from Elaine. Elaine, thank you so much for sharing that. And that is incredible. And let's have a look at some of the stuff that she was actually growing here. Here's some pictures that she sent in. Um, as you can see, l delightful looking vegetables, all uh, sumptuous from these beds that you can see in her garden. Some of these are, uh, I guess, raised beds, but you don't have to use raised, raised beds, of course. Um, I did an interview with Charles Dowding, which was talking about no dig. And so you don't even need to dig up. Just put the first, just put your um, uh, manure down on cardboard, and uh, it's amazing what results you can get. But look at all of that. This is just from one garden alone. You would think that Lorraine was a market gardener, looking at these um, incredible uh, vegetables. So there is no need for us to actually have to starve. But if we rely just on the supermarkets. Uh, to provide our food, I think we are going to be in serious problems because the supermarkets are putting pressures on our farmers who are basic, and the government, of course, are doing that, which is going to mean that we may see some shortages in the supermarket shelves. Highly processed food is not the way to go. It's not giving you the nutrients, the vitamins and the minerals that we need. And if you start growing your own and you start picking seasonally, you will suddenly discover actually just how tasty homegrown produce can be. Now, I understand that uh, Bill Gates wants to bring in a law that says you're not supposed to even grow stuff in your own garden or swap vegetables with your neighbour. I shall be talking to Sandy Adams about that. She's been doing some research on that in recent uh, months. And this is a, this is a, a stupid thing absolutely stupid uh, and why anyone would go with it. I think people are slowly waking up to the fact that there is a lot of nonsense going on in the world. They may not know, as we do, the minutiae of uh, Agenda 30 and all the sort of crap that's come down from the WEF and the WHO and all the Luciferians and the Satanists and the bankers who have been behind all of this. That's true. They may not know that, but the policies coming from government are so surreal, so anti-human, so bizarre that I think slowly people are going, actually, we need to take back control of our responsibility and start doing things for ourselves. And I couldn't agree more with it. Uh, I wish I had. A, I only have a live in a two up, two down. I have a tiny little yard north facing with no sun and it mostly filled with logs. But uh, my partner, Julia, and I are desperately looking for an appropriate piece of land, as most people these days seem to be, where we can grow and uh, have our own stuff without interference from the nonsense from the government. This has all got to change. We've all got to get back and support the farmers, grow stuff ourselves and get back to some realistic living instead of relying on all these idiots who seem to be in control or want to be in control. But it's all coming to a massive, uh, I, think, I think, culmination, you might say, this year. And so good on the farmers, good on the growers, and good on you if you're thinking about doing anything like that. Good luck and thanks for watching.